Welcome back to the Fire Emblem Awakening playthrough, and I'm actually not entirely sure what to do here, because normally I would move on straight to the next chapter, however, we actually have a... Well, something's come up on the map that I really want to talk about, and it might take a while if it, I made this part of another thing. Notice that... It just happened twice. A group of Risen just spawned on a space that a merchant was, and a merchant just spawned on the space where a group of Risen was. So, it looks as though this merchant sells a goddess icon as well. That's actually quite rare, and a steel axe too. This merchant is still selling what they sold before. But here's the question, what happens if you have both a merchant and a group of Risen on the same space? Well obviously, as you can see by the A button equals battle prompt, you can't actually shop with a merchant yet. But if you go into this map, we'll see the group of Risen enemies here as normal, but if you look down here, here is the merchant as an NPC. They have a unique merchant class here that uses lances, kind of like Donnie's villager class. It says there, save her and it might pay off. Basically, we need to protect the merchant for this battle. If she manages to survive the skirmish, then at the end of the battle we'll receive a random item as a reward. So, rescuing merchants can be quite worthwhile. The only problem is it's very random when merchants will actually show up, so you can't really count on it as a good method for getting items. The problem here is though, the enemies are actually quite strong on this in this Risen Encounter. See, look at that, level 12 Dark Mage with Arc Wind. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure this is really the map for us to be fighting on, but this group of Risen is a lot more manageable. We're on the North Road during Chapter 2, and on challenges on this map, you actually start off on the top area of the map, not the bottom. But anyway, there are the enemies here are level 5 to level 7, so they should be a lot easier. The Merton's over here, though, and we'll need to protect her before these two Dark Mages get over there, so... I'm a little concerned. Something else that I'm a bit concerned about? Not just that arc wind, but about this. See how that Nosferatu there is highlighted in blue? What does this mean? Well, look at this guy's Nosferatu, which by the way we'll get if we beat him. Might 7, hit rate 65. This guy's Nosferatu, might 11, hit rate 75. Yes, this is a forged Nosferatu tome. On the higher difficulty levels, enemies, especially in skirmishes, will often show up carrying forged weapons. And I believe someone else has one too. Yeah, this guy has a forged Nosferatu tome as well. Now, on lunatic mode, pretty much everyone is going to have forged weapons. And in fact, on lunatic mode, enemies can have forged weapons that are stronger than weapons the player is even allowed to forge. They break the forging rules, just they're that cheap. Here though, uh, yeah, forge weapon, kind of annoying. Also, because this may or may not be a bonus episode, I'm not going to do any supports here. So, you won't miss out on any story if you skip this episode. Anyway, just cutting to the end of the battle simply because I don't think you really need to see this, so I'll just include it within the other part. And hey, that was pretty sweet. So I'll just briefly recap what happened there afterwards. Lord. So we get uh, a reward as thanks for saving the traveling merchant. An energy drop, uh, strength boosting item, that's actually really good. So let's go ahead and save here. And in doing that, the Risen group will vanish from the map, but the merchant won't, so you can still continue to buy stuff from them. Anyway though, uh, as for what happened, Lissa leveled up once, but she did lose her physics staff. We weren't really supposed to have one by this point anyway, so yeah. Longku almost leveled up, uh, Maribel didn't. Muriel got one level up, so she's now equal to Rickin, so I can kind of compare them more directly now. Pan and Gaius both leveled up once each. Uh, Vacant Virion didn't level up, but Virion got close, and that's pretty much all. Also, Virion found a superior axe, which is basically the same as a superior bow, except it's an axe. But I can kind of get rid of that, because no one can use it at this point. So, I think that's hopefully everything that... Oh yeah, we got a small gold bar as well. So I hope that's a recap of everything that happened, basically. So, not really all that eventful, but at least Muriel is now on the same level as Rickin. And with that, I actually think I am going to include this with the rest of the chapter. So now, it's time for barracks and support conversations. 
That's kind of funny. This barracks thing is actually different to how it was um, when I tried last time. I guess it is randomized. Okay, Frederick's here. What's he doing? Oh yeah, for some reason I'm recording this at 4.45 in the afternoon and yet they're saying it's late. I think my DS clock may be set wrong. Anyway, Frederick gains a bit of experience, okay? That's ironically probably more experience than he'd get from a kill at this point, because of how much higher level he is than anyone else. Oh yeah, that candy tree over there was from Gaius, so the more characters we get, the more, um... And that uh, curtain with a rabbit face on it is from Pan. So this place is going to look livelier eventually. Okay, an item. Oh, Finn's Lance! Okay, from uh, Fire Emblem 5 and 4. That's another one of the uh, heroic lances to add to our collection. Okay, a romantic conversation. Who is it? Oh, again? Okay, this might even be enough to unlock a support between them. <laughs> well, Virion likes to make tea. Maybe he should have a chat to uh, Maribel. It seems nearly everyone in this game likes tea, though, because it shows up in a lot of supports. That and pies. Oh, Lissa again! You're really getting social today, aren't you? <laughs> but yeah, I guess um, <laughs> Gaius came this way because uh, Crom told him in the last chapter that uh, Lisa had sweets. That's kind of a nice bit of continuity. Now, this one is a friendship support from the looks of it, so uh, who's it going to be between? Oh no! <laughs> Mary Sue, stay away from my past files waifu. Okay, that's basically it. Now support time, let's see. Okay, we have Pan and Gaius. Oh wow, Lisa did unlock a support with Virion. Cro I'm not doing that one. And Sully and Kellum, yeah. Them spending so much time next to each other in the last chapter has resulted in a support between them. As well as another one between Donald and Kellum. Let's get the ones that I intended to do out of the way and get the accidental ones done afterwards. So, Donnie and Kellum B. Uh, what? Hooey. I sup I I'm guessing he means yellow there. I don't know. Yes, talking to plants definitely helps. And singing. <laughs> yeah, now if I know my uh, Pokemon um, botany, you basically just have to water them every day and um, occasionally fend off bug Pokemon if it's X and Y. Huh? Okay, so uh, he used some different soil. Okay. Hey. Guess that sort of makes sense. If you say so. And this is actually quite smart. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kellum spending a lot of time alone gives him what you just think. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Kellum might might even be smarter than Muriel. So my two more defensive lance uses, although Donald's not going to be a lance user for long, are getting supports, that's good. Next, um, Pan and Gaius, yeah. <sighs> hmm. Huh? Please. So apparently, despite this background, they're on top of a sheer cliff. This is where supports get kind of weird in this game. Apparently, um, they've decided to put a wall here with a map of Yilis, and, and I can't even explain it. Yeah, he was totally here on a mission, a very dangerous mission. A mission to get Honey to satisfy his cravings. Question. <laughs> nice burn there. Very nice burn. 
Oh yeah, um, something that I should mention, Gaius has a nickname for everyone in the army. So, he has, yeah, um, it'll show up in other supports if I get them. I forget what he calls Krom. Uh, I know that he has a specific nickname for everyone. Uh, this is actually kind of sad. No. Easy there. Yes. Ah. <laughs> but that's a C support at least. So, my non-intentional uh, supports. Firstly, Sully and Kellum. Now this one, hey. let's just say this conversation makes me glad that I'm not pairing these two. Okay. Um... <laughs> well, I mean, that was kind of an accident. We just had happened to have them standing next to each if other. you say so. Oh, and he wasn't even trying to keep it a secret. <sighs> Tiny man in a huge suit of armor. Pretty know. much describes Kellum. Hmm? <laughs> no. So that was a support conversation between them. I don't want to be too quick to judge based on, like, I mean, I haven't seen their B or A, but, uh... If all the support between them are like that, I really don't like that pairing. But anyway, uh, speaking of pairings I don't like, this is going to be amusing. Oh, that's disturbing. No. Oh. Hey. Do tell. Yes, I really hope he was using pitches metaphorically here, because otherwise, ugh. We don't want no Sonic 06 here. Oh, yes. yes, trust me, you do not want to read the kind of mail Virion sends to people, most likely. Um, yeah, he probably wouldn't mind it if... would mind it if he looked at the contents of those letters. Oh. Wait! <laughs> yes, yeah, showing, uh, Krom some of Virion's personal letters. This really is not going to end well. I seriously don't see how that could have any kind of good prep repercussions. But anyway, uh, with that all done, I don't think I'm strong enough to save this merchant, sadly. As much as I would like that elixir and goddess icon. So, I think there's nothing left to do but to do Chapter 7. So yeah, we're escorting Emerin through an area called Breakneck Pass. This totally is going to end well. I would like to have a word with whoever decided on our route, because he is clearly a moron. Or she, whatever. But yeah, just... Who escorts an important figure through a place called Breakneck Pass? Yeah, I mean, who even names a place Breakneck Pass, but whatever. We're going to go there next time. And by next time, I mean right now. Yeah, full disclosure, I actually recorded the first part of this video quite a bit before this part, so... <clears throat> yeah, I just instinctively said, see you next time at the end of it. But anyway, it's time to head on into Breakneck Pass. Yeah, going through here is totally a good idea. Also, I recognize Crom, Mary, Sue, Frederick, and Lissa, but who invited ineffectual minor character man? Oh yes, and uh, trivia time, this line here is the name of the world map music. Well, he does have somewhat better defense than you do. Hmm. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> and again, ineffectual minor character man. He doesn't even have a name. Yes. <sighs> and he's totally not suspicious at all. 
Yeah, random green character introduced, um, out of nowhere. Hmm. Yeah, he's been a friend of your house for many years, and yet you don't know his name. That pretty much shows how important he is. Hmm. Of course, Mary Sue's psychic plot sense has... And ambush, of course. Hey. Well, I mean, it's kind of your fault for going through an area called Breakneck Pass, but anyway. Yep, we're launched straight into the battle. And I must say, I really love this map. Just the design of this whole map, I mean, not in terms of an actual chapter, it's actually quite frustrating, but uh, the actual map design here, just look at this sheer cliff that um, only flying units can move across. It just looks so amazing. I just, I just love it. It's like that one chapter in Advance Wars Days of Ruin that has a sheer cliff. But anyway, we have lots of Wyvern Riders again. Joy. And a whole bunch of enemies on the mainland. More Wyvern Riders. Axe using bandits, archers, thieves, even though there are no chests here. That guy's got a droppable steel sword, though. We could use that, especially since steel weapons aren't really that um, available at this point. Hammer, gotta watch out for people like Frederick and Kellum there. Money, that's nice. Uh, more of these guys, and of course, yet another Wyvern Rider boss who dropped a steel axe for us. Die. I'm pretty sure this guy reuses the exact same voice clips as the previous Plegian Wyvern Rider boss, but uh, he is apparently different. Also, funny thing, in the Japanese version, he and Orton from Chapter 5 were both named after Italian food. That's kind of bizarre. Anyway, though, time to select units, and I definitely want Lissa, and that means Longku is a given too. And this is why I wanted to give the Worm Slayer to him, because we're going to be facing a lot of Wyvern Riders in this chapter. Speaking of which, Krom's Falchon is going to be useful here too. Now, I'm going to bring Maribel and I'm going to bring Rickham this time, because that L Thunder Tome is going to be very, very useful here. Not L Thunder, I mean L Wind, because of all the Wyvern Riders. On that note, Muriel might be useful too. Also, yes, finally Muriel and Rickham are at the same level. As you can see there, he has, um, I already compared their stats earlier. Definitely want to bring Pan because she's amazing and I'm totally biased. And that means Gaius is coming too, but that'll give me a good opportunity to train him. Now, I actually want to bring the Vake to this mission. The reason why will only become apparent after a few turns, but he does have that, um, I can't pronounce it, axe, which is good against enemy Wyvern Riders, well, anything flying. The problem is, its accuracy is terrible. Reminds me of Fire Emblem Six Axes. We definitely want Virion here, due to the number of Wyvern Riders we're going to be facing, so we're bringing him along. And you know what? I think I'm going to have to <coughs> kick out Sully. I mean, normally I would use them, but they've got a lot of screen time as it is. I need Rickan. Now, who else do I need? I actually kind of wanted to bring Donald to this one, just because he needs all the experience he can get, and I think we're going to be getting class change items soon, because we want him to get to level 15 as a villager, then reclass him immediately. And that means, as much as I would like to use Muriel here, well, Mary Sue already has wind tomes. So I'm gonna have to get rid of Muriel. I know it's kind of suboptimal to use Donnie here because of all the axe users, but uh, I want to train him. Anyway, so... Time to arrange ourselves. Now, Maribel does not want to be too far forward, but Rickhand does want to be far forward. Lissa and Longku need to go together. Gaius and Pan need to go together. Maribel just needs to be far back enough that she can reach Rickhand on the first turn. Vague kind of wants to be in the rear, as does Virion, sort of, but I kind of want Virion to be able to shoot the uh, Wyvern Riders as soon as possible. I think this is a good enough setup, actually. So, let's go ahead and save. Okay, and time to fight. <laughs> Evil laughter and generic villain music. You should be very careful when you say the word wind, considering that you're a flying class.
Well, who here isn't surprised? But hey, he's a green unit. Green units don't betray us. Oh, wait a minute. There were green units that attacked you in Fire Emblem 5. Forgot about that. And of course, he's selling out his country in exchange for his own life. And here, this guy committed one of the genre cardinal sins. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 that's what they do. <laughs> you see? That is one of the genre cardinal sins right there. Never sell out your country in a war story. You do that, and you are guaranteed to die. It's pretty much just the same as splitting up in a horror story, or answering the door with, oh, it's you, in a murder mystery. There are just certain things that if you say them or do them in a genre, you're immediately dead, no questions asked. Oh yes, and also, uh, this that guy just committed another genre cardinal sin. Ridiculously, um, overambitious. Oh yeah, they're gonna erect statues of me in the capital. Yeah, that's totally not gonna get you a well-deserved death. Um, we're not exactly going to do that. Oh, apparently Fila was here. Anyway, usual policy is going to make a battle save here just so I don't have to go through the cutscenes again. Okay, first to do some pair-ups. You go there, you go there, you go there. You, as much as I hate to do it, go there. You go there, because Virion really doesn't have anyone else. And Vake is going to be lonely for the moment, but not for very long. Now, here's the thing with this chapter. While it is tempting to rush forward, you really don't want to do that. There's far too many enemies here, and if you let them all gang up on you at once, you're going to get slaughtered. So, basically, you want to advance very slowly, form a wall, and let the enemy come to you, rather than rather than you coming to them. So, I'm going to go ahead and put Longku here and equip that Worm Slayer. Going to put Pan here. Going to put Krom here. And this is actually going to be useful because of a certain skill that Mary Sue has. And Donnie down here. That's going to block off most of the enemies from approaching beyond this line here. But there is a couple of Wyvern Riders, and for the first one down there... One resistance. For the first one there, I'm actually going to let him attack Rickham. And I'm going to move Vake up here. So, one at a time, these enemies aren't too bad, but all at once, they are extremely bad. So that's why you want to make sure that not too many of them gang up on one character, because the enemy is all too willing to do that. Of course, if the one character they gang up on is Pan... That happens! Yeah, Pan is pretty amazing. <laughs> and I love her battle quotes, as usual. Okay, you attack. I think you attacked Long Ku last time, so the enemy's AI is going a little bit different this time. And yes, I did actually have to restart this once. And Pan is amazing, as always. She will need a bit of healing soon, though, and I will need to watch out for her Beast Stone. As amazing as she is, you don't want to overuse her because then, well, she'll be useless because she'll run out of her weapon. I'll just mention it again, we won't be getting a second Beast Stone until Chapter 9. And there are quite a few side quests between now and then. Okay, so we have an Archer there, a Thief there, and lots more enemies back here, and of course more Wyverns. Now here, okay, who needs some experience? Well, Virion kind of needs it the most out of people here, but... I mean, the Vake needs it a little bit as well. Though Donnie probably needs it most of all. I just want to get him... Oh yeah, wow, that's awesome. 
Useless, but awesome. Oh, that's actually a very bad level up by Donald's standards. Generally, he gets about five stats on average, so that was kind of unlucky. Although, speaking of luck, Donnie's luck is always ridiculously high. Now, at this point, I like to put Longku on a forest here, because if Longku's on a forest and the enemy is axe users, he's pretty much completely unhittable. Now, as much as I'd like Gaius to get a bit of experience, gotta be careful, because you really don't want to rush forward with a thief. That's a bad idea. Although, you don't want to rush forward in general in this chapter. And here's where I'm glad for the fact that uh, Wyvern and Riders use axes in this game. Means they have terrible hit rates against sword users. You're no warrior. No, no, you're not. Now, Longku, please gain strength, otherwise I'll be tempted to say the same thing of you. Oh, that's worrying. Yeah, Longku has this tendency to get strength screwed in all of my playthroughs, so I'm actually a little worried here. I might have to use an energy drop on him if this gets really bad, because that strength is very low for a level 8. Like, as you can see, Chrom has 10, and, um, Vake's strength is ridiculously high anyway, so it doesn't, he's on a fair comparison. Anyway, okay, so, I'm going to attack this guy here. Come on. Just because the archers have the highest hit rate, they're pretty annoying. Oh, no dual strike, okay. <laughs> and level up! One more level and Krom will learn a new skill, one that will be quite helpful. Now this thief here... I'm relatively safe from enemy attacks if I have Gaius go ahead and attack that guy, but first though... As much as I would like Rickhand to get some more experience, I think it's more critical that I heal my frontline fighters now. Thank you. Not healing Pan will cause problems in the future because she's my main tank for this chapter. Yeah, now, something interesting to talk about as far as Gaius' critical quotes are concerned. They did a fairly good job of adapting them to relevant candy jokes in English, because in the Japanese version, a lot of Gaius' critical quotes and battle quotes in general, also this is kind of funny, Gaius gains a C rank just in time for him to grab that steel sword, which requires a C rank to use, so that'll be good. Though, I'll, considering how bad Longku's strength has been getting, I might want to actually give him the steel sword now. Anyway, though, a lot of Gaius' critical quotes are pretty much based around the fact that in Japanese, the words for sweet and naive sound the same. So he'll basically be calling the enemy too naive while using the words, the word for sweet. Kind of interesting, uh, because in the Japanese version of Ace Attorney Investigations, Shilong Lang's Not So Far is actually Amai Na! Which, uh, Amai is that word that means both sweet and naive. But yeah, English certainly does have a lot of, uh, candy-related jokes that you can substitute. So they were lucky there. And that music can only mean one thing. We're getting a new character, and this is why I brought Vague to this chapter. And wait, Phil is here? Really? Oh, great. <sighs> yeah, the most beloved mechanic in the game is back for this chapter. Joy! And apparently Phil is here. Huh? Mary, so you don't have to worry. Um, Cordelia can't exactly be a love rival to you due to the game's mechanics, so you won't have to viciously murder her. Right. Yeah, if a soldier from the border is now here and is telling you to beware of enemies from the rear, that's not a good sign. Definitely not a good sign. But for the time being, we have Cordelia. A Ulyssian Pegasus Knight too humble to see her vast talents. Funnily enough, Cordelia's kind of a deconstruction of the usual Mary Sue character type, but I'll talk about that more when we get to her supports. Huh? 
For now though, to find out more about her stat-wise, click the annotation. And here's the reason why I said Vake wouldn't be lonely for too long. I'm intending to marry Vake and Cordelia, and because of that, I'm going to pair them up as soon as possible. Now, yeah, everyone is a little weakened, so we sh could really use some healing. I may have to pull Longku back and heal some people. And speaking of pulling him back, I'm going to have to want to do that anyway, because... Let's just say that his Worm Slayer would be better served on the rear lines. Soon. Not yet, but soon. Now, these enemies are very, very annoying, and uh, you certainly want to be careful here. Because if you're not, then things can get quite dicey here. The enemy can and very much will gang up on a single unit if they can. And if you let a single unit get attacked by everyone here, even someone as ridiculously powerful as Pan, they probably will die. So this is the part of the chapter where you have to be very cautious. Also, not provoking these Wyvern Riders before you're ready, but... And not provoking these Wyvern Riders before you're ready. So a lot you need to keep track of in this chapter. If everything goes well, it, it's a pretty short one. But if it doesn't, well... It ends very early. I need to be very careful about who I heal here. Thank you. And more healing. Yeah, Maribel wants to be the very best like no one ever was. Yes, I had to. Gotta be a bit careful here. We don't want to rush too far ahead. However, we don't want to stay too far behind either. Because you probably know what's coming. At least this game has the decency to warn you about it. It's still very, very annoying. Uh, that's not exactly... Uh, might as well, though. Or I might as well do this. Just got to be careful of how many enemies attack uh, one character at once. Okay, someone want, needs to go there. Otherwise, yeah, Lisa's gonna get hit if I... In fact, though, I don't think I can move someone there, because if I do, then... I just noticed that thieves in this game have the same movement range as normal on foot classes. In most games in the series, they actually don't. You know what? I actually don't trust that. I'm going to heal up that last few uh, HP, because 1 HP can be the difference between um, survival and death a lot in uh, this game. In any Fire Emblem game, really. Now, I want Vague to kind of stay near the rear as well. You'll find out why shortly. Thankfully not yet, but next turn, I think. Okay, that still bow hits very hard, so I'm glad that missed. Okay, when a thief doesn't double you, you know you're decently fast. I owe you. Would have preferred someone else got that experience, but it does mean that Chrome is at least one level closer to, well, at least 50 experience closer to getting that skill. Okay, that's good because Virion is almost leveled up, so that'll be good for his experience. Hello there, moron! And no dual strike. But just as good. I think you see why my avatar married Pan in my first playthrough. Oh, you guys are moving forward. Okay, good. Uh, only two of them are. 
Now, this I think is the turn when something bad is going to come from here, so we need to make sure we're prepared. And who could be more prepared than... Um, we'll just wait a little bit, because first we'll need to get rid of as many of these guys as possible. Without provoking as many of these guys as possible. And Gaius is somewhat injured. Okay, okay, Virion can reach this guy. That might be very useful, as long as I can get rid of anyone who can threaten him. Yeah, Walt's bow is going to do an enormous amount of damage, so... I might leave that until later, though. And I can't safely switch to Ricken because he's been damaged earlier. Okay, yeah, need to get rid of a few archers. Need to make sure that I'm not in range of too many of those guys, though. Need to make sure that I don't go there, because if I do, I'll block off Virion's chance of shooting that guy. Gotta plan out your moves carefully at a time like this. And as much as I kind of want to... Yeah, um, you'll see why I'm being careful very soon. Okay. And I forgot how badly damaged Gaius is. Easy to do that when you're using the pair-up system sometimes. Oh, uh, you see, now, optimally speaking, I'd probably put Longku back here to get rid of one of these guys, but I kind of want him down here because I could use Vake for this strategy, but if all of the enemies at once gang up on Vake, considering his lowish defense at this point, that might be a bad idea. Have to be very, very careful here. Especially of that guy. Okay, let's see if I can take you down. Come on. Now I'm angry. Well, we certainly took him down. Right. And we have a steel bow that, um, actually, I could actually trade that to Virion in this chapter. Yeah, you see, that's what I want to do, but if I do that, then I'll need to find some way to get rid of him, and then... You know, I may have to use Vake here. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and shoot you. See, see people, here's where archers are really useful. Now, please gain speed. Well, that's worrying. Viron's meant to have a 60% speed growth. Why is he getting so speed screwed? Okay, how much will that guy do to Gaius? 19, and Gaius has 6 defense. That's seriously 1 damage above his HP. Well, I guess that means Pan's gonna get overused a little, but, um... As much as I want to do that, I kind of don't want this guy to remain alive. Oh, that axe is going to see some use, but um, a little bit later. Yeah, as much as I want to do this, I kind of think that would be a very bad idea. Also, speaking of bad ideas... Gotta be very, very careful, because if I'm not, then these two are going to get destroyed. Ah, oh, if only I had a ranged attack on someone like on someone there. Going to have to actually maybe do this, because that might block the enemy off a little more. Not that you can really block off a Wyvern Rider, but still. Your time. Gaius, I'd appreciate more jewel strikes just so that Pan saves on a beast stone. Actually, yeah, going there was perfect because I can pretty much safely do this and get some extra staff experience into the bargain. Just gotta make sure that the, that I do this. 
and Longku is injured, that should not be too much of a problem soon, because... And, okay, not this turn, okay, next turn, then. And I need to heal these two, well, I need to heal Faye. But he leveled up! Eh, pretty much what I'd expect from someone like him. Okay, gotta be extremely careful here, because, um, I keep pointing it out, but yeah, something bad is gonna come. The cool thing about pairing up with Vake is that Cordelia gains a really massive strength boost. That's one of the things that I really like about this pairing. So massive, in fact, that she can kind of do this. Wait, where's her javelin? Oh, she can't actually take that guy out with a javelin. That was almost going to be pretty amazing, but... Okay, who wants the kill? You're both seven, you're eight, you're nine. Pretty much everyone is seven at minimum, so really one of the level sevens. Like, honestly, Cordelia and Vake need it the most, but... Practically speaking, it doesn't really matter. Although I kind of would like to get Rick in a little bit of experience here. And in fact, I may even move these two down here. You'll see why very, very shortly. I forget exactly where they show up, but if you've got a movement range of 7... You know what, I'm actually going to have to kind of gamble on this. And no dual strike. Well, what can I expect? They've only just kind of started, but still. I don't think healing is entirely critical here, so I'm going to actually switch over to Rickin. And I don't even need the... Well, I actually might need the, um... Might need the, um, Elwin, but... I'm gonna try Thunder at the moment. Yes. Wow! Wow! Okay, that was amazing! Gained every stat except the stats you don't need. That's probably at just about perfect level up in my book. Not literally perfect, but almost perfect. Now, uh, if I provoke these guys, everyone will come rushing and this chapter will end very soon. And I might want to get a little more experience from reinforcements. Uh, that, I really don't want to speak too soon about that though, because if I do, bad things could end up happening. But I may as well go ahead and advance a few characters. Chrom's in a perfect position to run in and provoke everyone, and learn a new skill, but anyway. Here they are! And can they all hit Cordelia? See, the cool thing is, Cordelia's surprisingly bulky for a Pegasus Knight. Like, just look at this, an Axe user is only doing 6 damage to her, although if all of them can hit her this turn, I'm a little worried, and I may have made a very bad move. I don't think the third one can hit her. I could be wrong, but I don't think the third one can hit her. Unless it has a hand axe. Oh, sweet lord, if it has a hand axe, that's bad. In fact, if that guy had died there... Okay, good, the third one can't hit her, perfect. I'm kind of glad, because 20%, really. Longku is just the king of being hit by low percent, isn't he? Well, at least marginally better than... Oh, they're moving anyway. So I probably should have lured them. Okay, yeah, you there. Hello there, mate. Don't think I don't see you there. Okay, gotta lock in your range, because you're, of course... Now, unlike the previous Wyvern boss, he doesn't have a ranged attack. His stats are very, very high, but, uh, again, no ranged attack. So that is going to really hurt him. Speaking of really hurting, though... I do believe it's anti-air axe time. Provided that I actually hit these guys. Though, oh, Longku's out of range of those guys. Okay, so, gotta make sure we take out as many of these guys as possible. And for that, let's just see what happens if Virion shoots this guy. 
with the waltz bow again. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, here's where archers really shine. Speaking of shining... <laughs> Uh, that was totally unplanned, but pretty hilarious. And it's that... Okay, 41% is actually quite high. But he can survive being hit by two of them. Let me see. Yeah, that's your full movement range. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes, it is. So, Kron will be out of range of that guy. And I have just enough characters to finish off those ones. But Kron will not fail. <laughs> How apt. Speaking of not failing, Krom has reached level 10, and that means... He learned the Charm skill, which, uh, yeah, Charm is basically Charisma from Fire Emblem 4, though it has been nerfed a little bit. It only gives a 5% hit and avoid bonus to, ne to nearby allies, not 10%. Funnily enough... Okay, need to get rid of these two, and I'm pretty sure that in this game, reinforcements usually don't spawn two turns in a row. And I know that from my practice run of this chapter. Uh, yeah, you're easier to kill with just anyone. Yeah, here, have an anti-air axe. Yeah, I rule. <laughs> More like that axe rules. Also, Wyvern Riders give a lot of experience in this game. They usually do, but, um... That's kind of a thing with the series. Wyvern Riders do tend to give a lot more experience than most normal, um... Non-promoted classes. Okay, yeah, don't want to move Rick End there. Actually, kind of want to lock your range in too, just so that I don't accidentally provoke you with Rick End, because that would not be good. You can do it. Yeah. I did it. Kind of funny that basic Thunder's power is only one less than Elwind. Yeah, wind magic is fairly pathetically weak in this game. Just need to watch out for that boss guy. Maybe move back a little. Yeah, like I said, no reinforcements two turns in a row, and of course you were going to attack Virion. That was kind of obvious. But he can take one hit. Oh, you're being very annoying, but at least Krom can reach you. Okay, I'll deal with you later. For now, I need to take you out, and, um, who better to do that than Virion the Magnificent? No, oh, I need Waltz Bow, that's the only way I'll be able to do this. Since I believe the damage formula on this game, uh, for effectiveness bonuses is triple the weapon's power, I think. In some games it was d no speed again! I'm worried, I'm very worried. Yeah, in some games it was double, but in this game I'm pretty sure that it's triple. Because of that, the more powerful a bow, it really severely impacts just how hard it'll hit flying enemies. Oh, and... Oh, hey, Pan can reach this spot. Oh, that's nice. That's very, very good. Uh, uh, that's very good. I'll take that. Yeah, well, um, he's taken to gathering honey on the mountains now. Okay, I think it's just up to Krom, Vake, and Ricken to take this guy down. Yeah, this guy, uh, his stats make him very difficult to hit with, um, and that 1% critical rate I'm a bit worried about, but, uh, his stats make him very difficult to hit with that Volant Axe. I would really actually like to... Okay, if these people fail, then Krom can deal the final blow. So that's, um, 
at least useful. But first, let's just get a little bit of experience for Lissa. Because now that Maribel's around, Lissa's kind of not leveling up as much, considering that experience is now split with between two healers. Yeah, the thing with Lissa is that she gets very, very over-leveled early on due to the fact that she's the only healer. Charming. Burnt that hit very hard. Now, I really want to do this, but it's no big loss if this doesn't work. Come on, teach! You can do it! And he did! Well, we kind of already knew that. Well, this guy had an oddly long death speech for a generic boss, but okay, that's decent. Especially the defense, he could really use that. And a Steel Axe, he could use that too. Uh, so what am I going to get rid of? Um, you know what, this is very situational, I'm going to put that away from... I would say that, but the next chapter actually um, has some flying units too, so I'm going to get rid of the hammer. Oh hey, Vacant Cordelia with the heroes. Very nice. <sighs> And suddenly, em Emerin and Phila are here. My lord. Well, we kind of already knew that, but that's bad. What? Oh, that's not good. Well, when your army's being led by the enemy's king, especially in a game like this, you know you're going to get owned. Yeah, Cordelia's been through some pretty harsh stuff. A lot of the fanbase seems to forget this. Basically, the fanbase boils down Cordelia's angst to one issue, which really is kind of a bit of a gross exaggeration. Cordelia has a lot more reasons to angst than just, um, well, something that is fairly obvious I'll talk about later. But yeah, she has some issues due to abandoning her comrades to save herself. <laughs> and suddenly... This happens. Please reconsider. Fila gets a rare moment of voice acting. <laughs> And this music. So, essentially, this chapter was kind of pointless. But we're getting the Fire Emblem, at least. <clears throat> And at least we get to take this to safety. What? <laughs> you got that right. Twelve games of blood has been shed over it. God. Crumb. Sister. This is the name of a song in this game, but I'm not sure if it's this song. Your Grace. You sure about that? Because considering what happened to Cordelia's Pegasus Knight Squadron, I'm pretty sure the enemy is equipped to kill Pegasus Knights very easily. Thank you. That and I don't trust Emerin being protected by NPCs. Right. 
It's kind of a rule of these games, characters are only safe if they're protected by the main party. Yes. Of course. Of course, if she didn't, then, well, um, I'd be very annoyed that we'd suddenly got a character and had to lose her immediately. What? <laughs> Reminds me of certain people. Oh, I'm Tom on Ram and Vika! <clears throat> right. Now, the first Exalt, there's a bit of... I mean, it's kind of ambiguous who it was. People think it may have been Marth, but it's possible it could have dated back even earlier than that. Now, this plot point hasn't quite been explained, but it's entirely possible that, that this family is not just descended from Marth, but also from Sigurd from the fourth game. So it's possible that Salif may have actually been the first Exalt. I'll talk about why I believe that to be the case later, but let's just say, look at that mark on Emrin's forehead. That should ring a bell from people who played the fourth game. But anyway, there's still equal evidence for it being Marth. And with that, we're on the save screen again. So, things have officially gone very, very south. So, I'll see you next time when... Well, um... Uh... I'm not gonna hide it, things are gonna go south even further. But look forward to it all the same. Oh well. And the archer shot the guy who can counterattack. Actually, that's a bad... That's actually bad, because it means that it's possible that someone else could attack Virion. Oh, crap. Oh, that's bad. Donnie, Jewel Guard, please. How did I not notice that? Oh, frickin' hell! Oh my god, I'm dumb. Actually, something kind of interesting about Virion, though. If he runs out of HP, he actually retreats instead of dies, even on classic mode. That is going to become important later. <laughs>